There isn't a single new effect in the free version of DaVinci Resolve 18, right? Right? Not quite. There's actually one new call cool effect in DaVinci Resolve 18 which allows you to create funky new titles like this or this and even add movement or animation to still images to get you something like this or even this. NFT anyone? ka -ching. Or you can add smoke, mist or heatwave effects to videos like this directly on the edit page. So what exactly is it? Well, it's the new fast noise effect. It's available on both the free and the paid studio versions of DaVinci Resolve 18. But before we get any further into all of that, I just need to take one minute to thank this video sponsor, NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. NVIDIA Studio is a new software and hardware platform utilizing technology to make creative work easier and more efficient. RTX Studio High performance systems are loaded with the world's most powerful NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPUs. And those NVIDIA GPUs enable video editors to quickly use the high quality post-processing and advanced effects within DaVinci Resolve without compromising on video resolution, quality or playback smoothness. And that includes the open effects like this brand new fast noise. And Scan Computers are one of the biggest and most trusted resellers of NVIDIA Studio certified products in Europe. So click the link below to check out their line of NVIDIA Studio certified laptops, plus their own line of award-winning 3XS NVIDIA Studio approved custom systems built specifically for creators. One of which I'm actually using to edit and record right now, but more on that at the end of the video. Right, cool. Let's open up DaVinci Resolve and take a look at the fast noise effect. Now I'm going to whip through things relatively quickly. If you want to know all the ins and outs, or the nitty gritty of the fast noise effects, then what you want to do is open up your DaVinci Resolve 18 and click on help at the very top and go down to the DaVinci Resolve reference manual. Your web browser will open with the manual. Jump straight to page 3372 and there's all the details you could ever need regarding this fast noise effect with all the explanations. Sweet as a nut. Right, let's open Resolve. I'll walk you through it and then we're gonna have some fun with some cool examples. So DaVinci Resolve 18 on the edit page, open up the effects library, top left hand corner. Within there, go to open effects and then from this list, scroll right down to the bottom and you'll find the Resolve FX texture area and within there, you've got fast noise. Now, as this is an open effects effect, not a generator, you can't put this on the timeline on its own, you have to apply it on top of something else. So let's just grab an image. We're going to grab the fast noise and we're going to drop it on our image on the timeline. And there we go. Now, by default, you'll get this weird cloud in your preview. Go to the inspector, top right hand corner. Effects, you should see the open effects, fast noise within here, and then all the controls. If you don't see the controls, just click on the word fast noise to expand that like so. Now, there are quite a few different controls for the fast noise effect. If you want to know all of them in and out, check out that reference manual. I'm going to whip through them really quickly and then I'm going to show you the ones that I focus on personally, which seem to make the biggest difference and get you the best results with the least effort. So let's take a look. So the first thing you want to take a look at, preset at the top. It will default to default, funnily enough. If we give that a click, there's five presets here. We've got mist, which gives us a mist effect. We've got smoke, water surface, river, and then heat haze. Now, all of these, once you've selected them, you can come down and you can modify them using the controls underneath. Now, for this example, I'm going to go to smoke because it's the most visible, and then I'm going to whip you through some of the controls. First of all, scale does exactly what it says on the tin. We can make this smoke much bigger, or we can make it much smaller. The horizontal vertical ratio just squishes or extends it. Detail level just reduces or increases the amount of detail. Detail balance gives you either stronger large detail or stronger fine detail. To me, it seems to do something very similar to the actual level detail, so I leave that one alone most of the time. Evolution, this actually makes the whole animation more gradual, so it can really help to smooth things out if you increase the evolution. Underneath there, we've got brightness, simply changes the brightness. We've got the contrast, which is actually a really important one, but I'll come back to why a little bit later with the examples, it'll make more sense then. So we've got the contrast and then we've got saturation. So we can increase this saturation to add color to it and we can even add a bit of a color tint if we need to. Underneath that position, we can change the X and the Y position of the smoke and we can also change the rotation. Now, rather than using these controls, underneath your preview window, there's a little drop down box. Click that, go to the open effects overlay and then you get this appearing within your preview window. Grab the little star, hold your mouse and drag, and you can just move the X and Y position around like so. Grab the little circle and move, and you can change the rotation. That's much easier when you're working with something like the river, which is flowing water. You can just grab the little handle to change the direction that the water's flowing, 
like so. Underneath that, we've got auto animation. Velocity X just adds movement on the X axis, so we can make it move to the left or the right, however we need it. The Y is the same, but up and down, so we can just add movement up and down. Now with no velocity, you can see it's not moving left or right, but it is sort of moving amongst itself, and that's controlled by Seethe. If we want more movement, we increase that, we've got something crazy. If we want it much more subtle and slower, we lower that, and we've just got a real slow, fine little movements like so. And then we've got output, three options in here. Composite onto clip, which is where we see the smoke on top like so, put into alpha channel. And what that means is this smoke then becomes the alpha. So where the smoke was, so here, you can see it's much darker now, that's actually alpha, so that's letting things through underneath. A great example for this, I'm gonna move my image up we're just going to go to generators and put a four color gradient underneath and now you can see wherever the smoke was it's letting the four color gradient through and the last one is use to warp image and this is what the watery effects use because then the smoke actually warps the image rather than appearing on top of it and there you go so it looks complicated it's actually not you just sort of tinker with it until you get it looking just right so that boring bit out of the way now let's have some fun with it and create some cool effects so first up we got the watery title effect so i'm going to come into titles and we're going to grab text and put it on our timeline lengthen this out like so let's just open up the inspector we'll go to title we're just going to put water in here make it a little bit bigger do whatever we need to do with our text now if i go to open effects I'm going to use the search bar at the top. You just click this little magnifying glass to get the search bar if you don't see it. I'm going to type in fast noise, just grab fast noise, and we're going to try and drop that on there. Now, unfortunately, you can't actually apply the fast noise effect to text. So what's the workaround? Well, for this one, I'm going to grab a background just because it will look a little bit better. We'll put the background image underneath. So we've got water with this watery background. Now, we could apply the fast noise to our image. Give it a click. Inspector effects, we're going to change this to be the water surface, hit play, and we've got something that looks like that. But the water, our text, clearly is above it rather than underneath it. Now, that might be the effect that you're going for, which of course works, but I want my text to be under the water as well. So I'm going to just remove the fast noise from our image in the inspector next to fast noise, click the little bin icon to get rid of that. And what we're going to do instead is use an adjustment clip. So from the effects library, go to the effects tab, and then you've got an adjustment clip. We're going to put that over the top and lengthen that out to be the same length. And then we can simply go back to our open effects, find our fast noise. We drop that on the adjustment clip instead. Adjustment clips obviously affect everything underneath. So now our fast noise is on that. Give that a click, inspector, effects. I'm going to change this to be the water surface. And now we've got this cool watery style title effect and of course we can amend all the controls within here so of course the scale i want the ripples to be a little bit smaller something like that i'm going to come down to contrast i mentioned that contrast is really important contrast really changes the way it looks and how much of an effect you have so if i lower the contrast you can barely see the water is only slightly moving if i take it right up we have much stronger ripples and a much stronger overall effect i'm going to actually leave it like that I'm then going to come down to the auto animation. I may lower the seed so there's slightly slower movement, something like that. And then I'm just going to add some X velocity so the water's passing past. And then we've got something that looks like that, which I think looks pretty good. Now this one, I've gone for a fiery background with the word fire. I'm going to drop my fast noise on there. We're going to drop down to heat haze this time. Have a quick look. That looks all right, but I want to change the scale. Let's increase that. Maybe just the horizontal and vertical ratio. Let's make it a more obvious effect. And now we've got this cool fiery title screen instead. Add a few embers, give it some sound effects. That'll look spot on. Actually, loads of cool things that you can do with this and titles. Add some sound effects, some noise in the background, and it can look really, really cool. Now, next up, my personal favorite, using this to add motion to images. So let's start off super simple. I've got these clouds, and I want to make it look like there's a storm brewing. So I'm going to grab my fast noise, drop it on my image, inspector, effects, and we've got the options within here. Now I'm going to go with smoke, I think which gives us this effect. Now, this isn't what we're after. We want it to warp the image. So we're going to scroll down to output, change it from composite onto to use to warp image instead. Hit play. And now we've got this kind of effect. Now, there's a few things going on here which aren't to my liking. For one, we've got too much movement. I just want it to be seething. So I'm going to get rid of my velocity, 
just by double clicking to revert that to zero. And now we've got this. There's too much seed, so I'm going to lower this down. And now we've got this. Now that actually doesn't look too bad. We've just got our clouds slowly moving, but I think there's too much detail. So I'm going to go up to my scale, and just increase that. So the scale is much bigger. It looks like bigger movements and that's starting to look pretty cool. I actually think it's too obvious. So I'm going to come down to the contrast, just lower this a little bit because I want it to almost be unnoticeable. Just the tiny bit of movements that confuse the eye, something like that. Simple. Now, when you're doing this on the edit page, you can't mask anything. It just applies it to the entire image and job done. If you want to start doing more complicated stuff, then you need to do it on the color page. Now, don't worry, it's still really simple. We're just going to use a couple of power windows so we can specifically choose the areas where we want our fast noise to be to create some cool little effects. So here's this image of some coffee being poured into a cup, and I'm going to try and turn it into this. So I've got some sound effects, and we've just got the moving coffee with some steam coming out of it. So how do you do it? Well, we're going to give our image a click, this standard one over here, and then jump straight into the color tab. We want to make sure that you've got your nodes open over here. We've just got the one node. We're going to work on that for now. In this little menu bar right in the middle, you want to come to this circle with the four dots on it to open up your window. And then you've got these. So these are power windows, and you can use these to mask things. I'm just going to grab the pen tool. So this one that looks like a fountain pen nib. That will go red. And then in your preview, you can just use this to draw around your object. For those that are confused, what I'm doing here is just using my middle mouse button. If I click and hold my middle mouse and then drag, I can move the image around. If I scroll it, I can zoom in and out just to get this exactly as I want it, my preview window. And then I'm gonna click my left mouse just to do a real quick mask, something real basic, just around this coffee pour, like so. And then we've cut that out. Then I'm gonna to go to effects, top right hand corner, and this is the same effects library that you're used to on the edit page, pretty much. At the top, I'm going to go fast noise, grab that, drop that on this node. And now we've got our weird gray cloud. So we're going to change the preset. I'm just going to go with the water surface, hit play, and there we go. So now we've got this weird effect. Now, one thing you will notice, there's a real harsh edge. Down here in the power window, we've got softness. If we just increase that, that softens the edge of the mask giving us something that looks like this. And then it's the same thing. We want to come to all of our parameters, just mess with it to get it looking as we want it. So first things first, I'm going to just lower the seed, I think. Something like that, maybe. If I change the input alpha to limit warping effect, that makes it look a little bit more subtle as well. I'm not actually entirely sure what that's doing, but I like the way it looks. It doesn't give you as much overlapping warping effect, so that looks pretty good. And then you may want to come and mess with the scale. I want it to look a little bit finer. So I'm just going to go with something like that. That actually doesn't look too bad at all. Now we just need to do our mist or our smoke. So I'm going to give my node a click in the nodes here. Using the keyboard shortcut of Alt and S, we can just add a new node. And then we're going to repeat the process. So I'm going to come on down. I'm going to grab my pen again. I'm just going to do something really rough around here. I want my smoke, my steam even, to be around that. Something like that. Fast noise, drop that on there. Default, mist, hit play. We can sort of see the mist coming up, but we've got a harsh edge, so we're just going to increase that. And it's really subtle, but there's just a little bit of mist coming up like so. And now my personal favorite of the bunch is taking this still image and turning it into this. Now this is the exact same process as I did before. So we're going to hop into the color page, but all I did, I've got one mask, which is this water here, which is just the water surface. And I did two additional masks, one for this area of the waterfall, another for this area of the waterfall. Tweaked it to get it looking exactly as I wanted it. Added some sound effects, and I actually think that looks really, really good. I actually had loads and loads of fun making these, so I'm probably going to do some more. If you want to see a whole dedicated tutorial video on these, let me know down in the comment section below, because I think I want to do that. That sounds like it could be quite a lot of fun. Now, if you're on the studio version, you can actually combine fast noise with the depth map to add smoke to just foreground or background or in between really quickly and easily. So let's open that up for one last time and take a look. So here we've got the shot of these three kids in the woods and it kind of looks spooky, but we want to add some mist sort of to the background to really spook it up a bit. So we're going to hop into the color page and we're going to start off by grabbing our depth map effect, dropping that onto our nodes as a new node like so, and then connecting up our green and our blue. Now I'm going to whiz through the depth map effect right now, but if you're interested in the depth map, check out one of my previous videos. It's linked above down in the description where I go into detail about how to use the depth map effect. 
So I'm just going to adjust my limits just to get it so I've got most of the foreground and then the background. Now I want my smoke to be on the background, so I need to invert this. So the white areas are where our smoke are actually going to be and the black won't be affected. So this guy won't be, but that's slowly walking into the fog. That looks about right. So we're going to turn off our depth map preview. So now we're going to go back to our effects library. We're going to find our fast noise. We're going to add this as a new node just down here. Connect our blue to our blue. Then we're going to go to our preset. Let's just go with mist. And we just adjust it to get it something as a liking. I'm just going to go with this. And as you can see, we've got the mist here. This lad at the back isn't affected by it. But as we play through, these are walking into the fog. And as they start to get further away from the camera, as they go more into the middle ground and the background, we can start to see the little fog goes above them like so. Now, it was thanks to that NVIDIA 3090 GPU in my Scan 3XS system, which allowed me to record this tutorial so quickly and so smoothly. So do check out Scan's lineup of NVIDIA Studio certified 3XS systems by clicking on the link down in the description below. Fast noise is pretty cool, hey? Thanks for watching, take it easy. I'll see you next time.